check. Can everyone hear me loud and clear? All right, good, good, good. Welcome everybody. Uh, can everyone see my? Uh, can everybody see my screen? Up, see my PowerPoint up on the screen? Just give me a quick yes. All right, perfect. Well, sorry for the delay, ladies and gentlemen. I um, just wanted to give people, everybody, a little extra time to post their orders through Candlestick and like to thank all the presenters for, once again, being here. Uh, you just have uh, just listened to Steve Bigelow, a great contributor to, uh, to Cybertrain University and to the trading community, one of the really good, great mentors and educators uh, in today's industry. Now, I'm going to be taking over for about an hour, ladies and gentlemen, and then we're going to pass it on to uh, Sandy Shank. It's going to come in right after me. But uh, today's topic that I'm going to be talking about is how to get in on major stock moves before they start. Now, I have a lot of slides. I know I'm going to have a lot of questions. Um, listen, listen, um, I'm going to try to answer them as quickly as I can. I am from one good thing that's going on my side. I'm from New York. I talk very, very fast, uh, but I'll try to keep it kind of slow. So uh, in a way of trying to keep you guys up to speed, but I have some great content uh, I want to cover and uh, tell you about some of the great movers of about trading. All right, can everyone hear me okay right now? All right, sorry about that. Check the wrong box. All right, so basically what we're going to be talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is um, things that we've learned, uh, things we're going to be learning is how to spot market movers in high frequency trades. We're going to talk about how to execute successful entries and exits, how, um, how to apply proper risk management techniques, and also stocks that we've traded. Now remember, today's event, we're also gonna be doing a vote um, regarding about uh, the best picks. I'm gonna tell you one of the trades that we've done. I know we have a lot of students here of Cybertrain University also, and they could be witness of the trade. So you guys at the end of the event, remember, we want all of you to cast your vote. Now, uh, just a little bit about Cybertrain University, so you just know a little bit about us. Um, I've been teaching since 1995. We're one of the longest running educational schools um, in the industry. I'm also one of the original Souls Bandits that started. Uh, when I started, it was about 1,000 day traders. Now there's over about 10 million around, um, about 10 million around the world. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been, and, and it's only growing. So that's the way I have to look at, ladies and gentlemen. Now, regarding about the, um, about trading, how I got into education, ladies and gentlemen, is that I love teaching people, and uh, trading became a very, very part-time job with me. I, I only, I was basically, you know, like you just heard from Steve Bigelow just mentioned, um, before I was a successful trader, I was a successful loser. And understand, every speaker that is here today, okay, it took us to lose to realize how little we knew about trading to become very, very successful. And the way we became very successful, and I think a lot of you guys are here doing the same, is that it turned out that everybody here realized that um, we, we need to learn how to trade. We really need to go out there and learn how to trade the market, know the mistakes that we've made, um, learn from people that do it every day, because the biggest failure rates of today's industry are the self-taught individuals, okay? And I think everybody here has done it, have tried it and realized it doesn't really work, okay? Now we have great mentors and great educators here and believe me, we all, all of us speakers here have been there also. Um, we've, we've all been here and uh, uh, made big mistakes in trading and you know that's why we, we don't want you guys to go through the same pain that we went through and that's why we love what we do. And also most importantly, you know, We've learned how to educate people in a way that we have a lot of time on our hands, and that's why we love teaching and what we do. All right, so why do 80, 90% of the people fail? Why are most of you guys are here sitting there thinking like, well, why, why do people fail so much? What, what do we do that's wrong? Well, the biggest things that people fail, like I just mentioned, 
the reason why people fail is because improper education. I find that most people go out there and want to be self-taught. You guys know, and the, uh, the reason why you guys are here, and, and you know better than anybody, that trading is the best job in the world. But you need to be trained by the right person to show you how to play the game. Now, what's the biggest number one mistake? Why half the people fail? Is they go out there and they open up a brokerage account. I think, and once again, everybody wants to try it, but nobody wants to learn it the right way. That's why we're here. So you got to be careful with these brokerage firms because they go out there and they'll start advertising free trades, 200 free trades. I'm not going to point to any names, but how the hell does Fidelity make money by giving free trades? Does anybody know? Let, let's, let me just put a little pop quiz out there. How, did, how does Fidelity make, is able to give away free trades? Who here wants free trades? Anybody here want free trades? Anybody? I don't think so. Of course you do. But at the end of the day, if you're running a business, if you're running a business, how do you make money on free trades? Okay? Let me explain something to you guys. Brokerage firms go out there and offer you free tickets. And I always tell everyone, the only thing that's free is the cheese and the mousetrap. All right. So the thing is this, you want to learn, you got You have to start off and getting the right system first. That's where half the people fail in comes in trading. I know a lot of you guys have been, um, a lot of you guys have been watching everyone here been watching the presidential elections. Anyone here been, been watching the, what's the biggest thing they keep talking about? Okay. We got to go after those wall street guys. They're making so much money. Hillary Clinton's getting destroyed because, uh, about the 25 uh, Bernie's like beating her up that why do they pay you, you know, a quarter of a million dollars do a speech. Listen, we know they make a lot of money. Okay. We, we, that's why we're in the business. We, we don't hate them. We just want to be them. And that's the way you have to look at it. It's a great business. Now let me explain to you how they make money. Okay. Because everybody here talks about, is it rigged? Um, you know, how do they make money? Why do they give free tickets? Why are people getting suckered in and losing money? Now, remember, I didn't even get into the education part of it. I am right now the most important education that you guys have to understand is you got to have the right brokerage account. Okay. And if you listen, you know, and you'll listen to all the speakers today, just like you just heard from Steve Bigelow. He went out there and told you he trades with, with, um, with think with think or swim. I have, you know, I, I have encounters with thinkorswim. I've done a lot of educations with thinkorswim and there's a lot of great ones out there, but how do you know the right one is for you? And I could tell you this, they don't give you free tickets. Okay. Nobody works for free. Now, how do they make money? Very, very simple. Does anyone know something? Anybody ever heard of the lingo called payment for order flow? Anybody heard of that before? Payment for order flow. It's where a brokerage firm takes your order and they sell it to another brokerage firm. They get paid for it. Could you imagine your brokerage firm's not even buying you stock? So what are they doing? They're going out there, placing your order, sending it to somebody to sell it to them. If not, they go through their order routing system. They'll go through a dark pool, which means they're just buying, you're buying stock in their own inventory. If they don't have it in inventory, they go to the desk, they buy it on the bid, they sell it to you at the offer, they make the spread, cha-ching, that's where they make their money. Now, how many times have you sat down and said, you know what, why, why are my orders taking so long? Why can't I cancel an order? Why are they not showing me where my order is? What's going on? How many times have you placed an order and you always find out that every time you get out of it, they sell it to you at the bottom of the day, and when you sell it, you always sell it at the top of the day. Why, is it, why does that happen? Sometimes you wonder if they're watching you. Of course they're watching you. They know everything that you're doing. That's why the cheese is free, you know, is free in, in the mouse trap, and we all know what happened to the mouse. Okay? Now, I'm not here to convince you what brokerage firm is the best or not. What I'm here to convince you first before we move on, before you start learning how to trade, is don't worry about a brokerage firm account. Let's find out what kind of trader you are. You've got great speakers that we have. We invited you here today at the Cyber Expo. They're going to talk about day trading, swing trading, options trading, forex trading, you know, charting. And you guys need to 
sample a little bit of everything and find what you like. Okay, but don't worry about opening up brokerage accounts. That's the least of your problems right now. You know, I always look at you as my children, okay, and you just got your driver's license. So you want to go out there, buy the car. You didn't even know how to drive yet. Let's learn to drive first, and then we'll go out there and learn how to trade. So the thing you have to look at, ladies and gentlemen, is what I want you to understand is that with today's technology, and I was one of the developers that helped the exchanges build this. I was one of the developers for, for the ECNs that came out. You have a seat on the exchange, okay? You can go out there and place bids and offers with every brokerage firm out there. Think about it. You could see your order. You could see it being placed. You could see who's buying it. You could see who's selling it. You could see who you got it from. Could you imagine that you always had the deal for the rest of your life public transportation? Now you get to drive your own car. Now, here at Cybertrade University, what we do is, um, it, and I'm going to invite all of you to come and join me in live trading, come and join a trading room. And remember, the reason, and one thing I want you to understand, there are not that many schools out there that will trade with you. And, and everybody that's here, we do is exactly what we do. We all offer a professional trading room. There are hundreds of schools that you can believe, hundreds of educators out there in this world. There's only a handful, and we invited them there here today, that will trade with you. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to show you, um, you can come and join me on Monday, and I'll show you what it's like to trade in the real market conditions. But the thing you have to understand is that market makers, which are brokerage firms, um, we could be them, we could trade with them, and we could see what they're doing, and we could follow them. Now, listen to me carefully. Follow the market makers. That's how we make money. Remember what I told you earlier. I live here in New York. This is the financial capital of the world. I was trained by the best traders in the world. And when I was like you 20 years ago and stepped in the room just like you 20 years ago, okay, what I've learned today, what you're about to learn right today, you're going to realize that you've been trading blind your whole time. So, how do we prevent that? Well, everybody thinks that you got to learn level two. There's, just, there's different levels, level one, level two, and level three. Everybody thinks you got to learn how to use the execute, you know, you, you know, there's a niche and there's level two. You know, the problem with level two is it doesn't show you all the orders. You see, the key to trading, 70% of the volume is being controlled by, um, is being controlled by, by the market makers. All right. That's being controlled by the market makers. Now, can everyone see the, sh uh, the screen, by the way? Just making sure. Can everybody see the screen? On the top of the screen, uh, the tab, just click on uh, uh, screen share. Okay, good. All right, so now what you do, ladies and gentlemen, on level two, you don't see all the orders, okay? Um, you only see the best bid and the best offer of a market maker. Now, there is something called level three. Does everyone here know what level three is? Who here knows what level three is? Okay. Some of you don't? Uh, well, level three is basically showing you all the orders. Yes, it's total view. Very good. Okay. Um, the lingo... Um, if you don't know what total view is, some people call, you know, they call it the, the order book. Um, the actual, the original name is called the ECN book, okay? So let me explain to you what you're seeing. What you're seeing, you're making smarter trading decisions by not just having the information, but the right information. This is where you're going to see all the high-frequency trades, okay? Now, does everyone here know what high-frequency trades are? Everybody know what a high frequency trade? High frequency trades are big block orders. This is where you get the algorithms, computer trading. This is where 70% of the volume is. That's basically, I don't need to get into great detail, other than 70% of the volume is being traded through high frequency trading. That's what I call it. Right. So now think about this for a second. How much better, what, is it, what would it be worth to you if I was to tell you 
that we could monitor 70% of the volume of a stock. What does that work to you? If you could see where 70% of the volume of a stock that you're in. Well, Joseph, you're right. It, it, but you know what? We're not retailers anymore. That's why you're here. And it's going to continue to damage retailers. You know why? Because people are ignorant. People think the cheese is free in the mousetrap. Okay? And they want everything for free. All right? So my fault, you know, listen. I went to a concert, okay? I went to a free concert, and I went to a paid concert, okay? And the free concert here in, you know, was in Central Park. I, I, um, I saw um, a great performer a while ago. Um, and let's just say, just hypothetically, it was, it was uh, um, Billy Joel, okay? And you have two concerts to go to. You got the free concert to see Billy Joel, and you got the... The other concert, that's going to cost you $50 to go see Billy Joel at, 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 a, at a venue. What's the difference? One of them, you're going to probably get about a million, a million people watching him, so you're probably not even going to see anything or hear anything. And not, not even that, but deal with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It might even, you know, every drunk, every bum, every crazy person. And there's nice people there, don't get me wrong. But then there are people that you could, you're going to be in a different league where now when you're paying $50, now you eliminated 99% of the people that are going to show up, so now you can at least enjoy yourself. Well, in trading, it's the same thing. This is a business, and you have to treat trading as a business, okay? And so if you think anything is free in this world, it's not going to happen. And that's why most people will fail in trading. So let's talk about the value of what high frequency can do. Because what I'm about to tell you, you can get this, and it's only like $15 a month. This is what kills me. It's $15 a month, and you can get it from the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ Exchange, your own brokerage firms. But this is what's going to separate people from fail, uh, succeeding and failing. This is what you see. High-frequency trades are going to show you where all the big block orders are. Here you have a little screenshot of, of, a, of a big block orders. Um, and you can see you got 400 shares, 700 shares, 1,000 shares, you know, and you see all the different prices on the left, right? And you can see the asking price. So how does a trader know where to buy and where to sell? Well, you know where you know where to sell? Where the other big sellers are. And if you notice, at $40, there's a 96,000 share seller out there. Now, who do you think is going to make more of a – a more of a stand, you know, to prevent a stock from going higher. I could tell you this, it's not the guy of 500 shares. So when you're looking, you know, so how, how, do, we, how do we know and how do we utilize this information? All right, does anyone here know how to read a chart? Everybody here know how to read a chart? Okay, now I'm going to keep a chart, a chart keeping it very simple. Okay, you got support levels and you got resistance levels. So look at the chart on the left. You see how the stock literally went from five dollars all the way to five fifty, came back down, hit five fifty, came back down, hit five fifty. You know, just constantly having an issue. You know, um, of getting in and getting out. It's having a really tough itch, issue of constantly breaking that resistance levels. Why is it having a tough time? Why does it keep going, hitting that price and going down? Well, when you look over here on the, this is trade stations matrix, on the left are the buyers, on the right are the sellers. The bid is the ask, the right is, um, the, bid is, the bid is the buyers, the ask is the sellers. And when you look over here down the numbers, you know, right now we're trading, you know, at $5.42. But when you get close to $5.50, you have a 192,000 share seller. Um, hello? No wonder why every time it hits 550, it backs off. Because there's a big seller out there. Let me tell you, the 600 share seller, the 500 share seller, the, 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 the 100 share sellers, that's not going to prevent it from going higher. It's the 192,000 share seller out there. Ladies and gentlemen, let me teach you, let me explain to you 
how charts work. On a chart, chart is previous data, okay? These are transactions that happened in the past. Does a chart show you buyers and sellers, ladies and gentlemen? Does, does a chart show you buyers and sellers? So how do you utilize a chart other than having a game plan? Okay, now, but what you need to confirm a support and resistance levels is you need buyers and sellers. That's what you need to see. So here is an example of PayPal. Anyone familiar with PayPal? The stock PayPal. And by the way, this, I'm just going to tell you something also. This is not the Fausto Puglisi um, uh, Fibonacci, you know, Fausto Nacci or anything. This is how Wall Street traders trade, okay? We follow the money. Now, when it comes to trading, ladies and gentlemen, and when you come to trade, and when it looks at trading, um, let me just fix something here. You have to know where supports and resistance levels are at all times. So as a trader, what I teach my students what to do and what I teach you what to do is how to have a game plan and know where to get in and where to get out. You see, one thing that I was trained what I, and the way I train my students is, you know, I know everyone likes stock picks and I know everybody wants to see, you know, what you're buying, and what you're selling. But where I get in and get out, you might not get in and out. I teach you how to figure it out on your own. I think, think of me as the captain of the ship, and I'm going to take you fishing. I'm not going to catch the fish because that's the easy way of doing it. And you know what? If I don't go fishing, you're not going to eat, okay? What's the old saying? You know, cook a fish for somebody, you feed them for the day, show them how to fish, you know, you feed them for life. It's the same thing when it comes to trading. If, you, if we let me teach you how to do it and you know how to play the game, you'll understand and you'll make better and smarter trades all the time. Uh, John has a question. I thought FT, F, um, HFT front uh, running by not showing ahead what they're, they're going uh, to do. Well, John, let me ask you a question. Who taught you how to trade? Where did you learn how to trade? Because that's the most important thing. Were you a market maker? Because I was. Okay, were you a trader? Did you go out there and learn from, um, from a market maker? You know, that's the way you have to ask yourself. Now, I, you know, because... And the reason why I'm bringing that up, John, is because a lot of people like you ask the same question. That's a great question. I love that question. But at the end of the day, I always, the way I always confront someone and ask them is, well, who taught you how to trade? Who was your mentor? And you know what the answer I usually get back a lot? Oh, well, no one really taught me. I read it out of books. and I watch YouTube channels. Well, you know what? When it comes down to it, if I had to give money to a financial planner, I wouldn't want him to be self-taught, and I wouldn't want to give my money to somebody that learned on YouTube or read out of a book. So let's be smarter than them. I'm showing you how to play the game. It's not that hard. Well, various sources, but not market maker. Well, guess what? I am a market maker. I was a market maker, and I'm showing you how we trade the market, okay? And I'm not saying those are bad people, okay? I bet they're really nice, reputable people who ever train you. And you know what? You can learn something from many different mentors. Um, but you have to learn from those people. Um, who was my mentor, Kyle? I mean, you wouldn't even know. I mean, Frank Ferrara, Lou Ferrari, uh, James Polizzi, people you don't know. These are people who are on the floor that I would train. But I can tell you this. I learned from guys from Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, Shearson Lehman. You know, I've, I've learned from people all over the place. So now... And by the way, Steve Bigelow is a market maker. I mean, was a, was, a, was a broker. He knows exactly, you know. And let me tell you something. Before I was a trader, I was a broker too. We all started from the bottom and worked our way up. But, the, you know, I don't want to get off because I don't have too much time. I got literally uh, another 30 slides to go through. And the thing is, you got to learn. You know, so I have a few more things I want to cover. Now, if you look right here, ladies and gentlemen, you see how this stock PayPal went up. It came back down. It went to 40, dropped down to 39.40, went back to up to this 40. And if you look at the 40, you could see that there is a 96,000 share seller. Okay. So, and, and you could see it. If you didn't know where to get in, where to get out, you would have constantly kept giving that money back. Okay. And, um, you know, and, and remember too, 
when it comes to trading, question I want to ask everyone. And when you look at it, hold on. Because this is the, the next question I get. Is this a fake order? Yes or no, everybody? It applies to all stocks, Lou. All stocks. Because I always get people that always say, oh, I heard these are fake orders. Um, those are, um, those, that's called spoofing. Um, you know, how do you know they're real? Well, I, I'll prove to you if they're real. Come and join me Monday morning, okay, because you're all invited uh, to come and watch this trade for three days. And um, if you think they're so fake, we'll find a big order and you go out there and execute it. And we'll see how fake it is. First of all, there's not a brokerage firm that will allow you to put fake orders out there, okay? Um, so when it comes to trading, ladies and gentlemen, they're not fake orders, okay? These are real orders. This is what, this is what basically what we do. Um, oops, sorry about that. I'm just trying to something here so these are all real orders they're not you know there's nothing fake about it all right now can somebody cancel an order is it possible someone can cancel it hey you could you cancel an order of course you could so but they are real okay now here you have an example another example CHGG, look at this stock. This stock um, from, from this morning went from $7.80 and it all went all the way up to like $8.50, which pretty, you know, listen, stock almost ran about a dollar in about an hour, hour and a half. You know, I'll take that all day. Thousand shares, I'll, I'll take $1,000 I'll take, I'll take a day every day. I don't have a problem with that. But the question is, is like now, you, you know, some people are trying to figure out, well, where do I get out? Where's my resistance levels? When do I take a profit? Okay. Well, did you see the 82,000, uh, the 8,000 share seller out there? Now, you, now you probably might say like, well, that doesn't really sound like a lot of shares, right? Well, if everybody's showing hundreds, 500, 300, and then all of a sudden you're getting, you know, 20 times the normal of what most people are putting out there, 3,000. Six, eight thousand. I would rather be on the eight thousand share si uh, uh, trader side than the, the four hundred share seller side, right? And you know what? History is a funny way of repeating itself. You see, this is not going to hurt you when it comes to trading. And I know everyone has a style, you know. And this is what you eventually what you find. You know, you might you might like a specific indicator. You might like to trade a specific type of industry. You know, you might like to trade earnings announcements. You might like to trade stock splits. You might, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, what is wrong about following where 70% of the volume is? So if you have a style that works, it's great. But when it comes to trading, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know where the orders are. Now, look what just happened with that CHGP. Okay, look where she went from. She went all the way up from that big order we saw at seven. Look at at, at eight forty-seven. Now it's nine thousand shares. Because remember, this is not stagnant; it constantly keeps changing. But look what happened. Now it's dropping. Okay, now it's dropping. Now some of you be like, "Oh my God, what's going to happen? When is it going to stop?" Well, usually it stops where the next support level is. Well, how do you know there's support levels there? You got to have confirmation. What makes support levels is big block orders. Uh, doesn't HHT send thousands of orders in milliseconds in, in small amounts? Lou, you know what? Um, in some stocks they do, but I don't understand. There's over 25,000 stocks out there. And if you're trading the top, you know, uh, 10 stocks in this world, if you're trading the Teslas, the Facebooks, uh, the Googles, the Apples, yeah. And you know what? You can't beat them, Lou. Because remember, why are we here? To make money. Do you really care what you trade? Or you just want to make money? Okay? Um, how, you know, at the end of the day, when you sit down with your wife and you, and you sit at a dinner table and you're telling you're doing a career in trading, you think a trader every day tells their wife, 
or their spouse or men and women or whoever's there um, explaining in detail why you traded this and try to convince them why you made money in this. Because to, 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 the, to the normal person out there, they will have absolutely no clue what you're talking about other than saying, oh, yeah, I heard that Facebook was a good, a good buy. Oh, I heard that, um, you know, um, you, should buy, you should buy Google. You know, it's a good stock. Come on. Which, we're in this business. I will never, ever trade those stocks. Not that because they're bad companies. Because I would rather risk $8,000 to make $1,000, okay, and an $8,000 investment than going out there and risking, you know, $800 on Google, whatever it's trading at, 1000 whatever it's trading, to make the same 1000 My goal is to make $1,000 a day. Okay, just like all of you, let's say you're all out there trying to make a thousand dollars a day. Do you really care what you did? You're in the business. You think a construction worker cares that he's got to work in a bare neighborhood, but he's going to make 10 times the money. Oh, I'm too good. I, I, I can't. You're not buying it for your own personal use. You're there as a business. You're here to make money. That's all you're looking. Now, let's let's move on and let's look at another example here. Look at this iceberg order right here. Look what happened to this stock, okay? Everyone there is showing you, and, and by the way, the less volatile stock, brand name, not volatile, the less brand name stock you're looking at, the more iceberg orders you're going to see. So the ones that talk about the milliseconds, yeah, because everyone in the world's trading them. But if you kind of trade something that not most of the norm people trade, believe me, it's a lot easier. You can make smarter and better trades. Look at this example right here. Look how this stock, um, Here's a long-term chart, okay? This stock went from $2 all the way up to $8, okay? And then when it hit eight, it came back down to five. It went back to, you know, eight, like $7, it came back down. And you could see it. The top one is an intraday chart. Look how this stock went from $5 all the way to seven. By the way, could you guys do the math? Anyone, anyone could add? What is seven minus five? And by the way, this is not... Um, <laughs> and I, I don't. I won't pull a. Uh, um, I won't pull a uh, Common Core on you. Question. Okay. Very simple math. Two. Can everyone? Everyone agree? What is two times a thousand shares? What's two times a thousand? That's two thousand dollars. Does anyone care what EPE d is doing, or would you rather make $2,000? How about this? How about if you made half that? Hell, what about a quarter of that? 500, okay? So money's money. I just want to be clear on that. Now, why did the stock back off, and why is it having a tough time? Because somebody's still out there dumping 60,000 shares of that stock. Do you know what 60,000 shares times $7 is? It's over, it's over $400,000. You know, everybody here is showing 100,000, 5,000, 6,000, 60,000. This is not talking peanuts here, guys. 60,000 shares. Are these things liquid and how do you manage to risk uh, to stop? Lou, that's a great question. And you know what? I got a beautiful PowerPoint for you. You probably, and, 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 and you're looking at it. Let me prove it to you on Monday morning. Because let me show you, you have to, yeah, yeah, you, because I can't prove it. You know, listen, everyone can make a gorgeous PowerPoint, but at the end of the day, cause you could talk the talk, but could Fausto walk the walk? So if you want me to show it to you and see how liquid they are, you're going to have, you're going to have the opportunity to come and see it live in the market with me because they're there every day. All right, let me uh, change the slide here. Now, let's have a little fun. Everybody ready for a little pop quiz? You'll be there Monday? Good. That's what I want to hear. Anybody ready for a pop quiz? All right. Let's look at this chart right here. Okay. Now, the stock right now is trading at 1609. Looking at the data that we have, is the stock going to go up or go down? Can everyone answer that question? If you don't know the answer, just give me a question mark. What do you think the stock's going to do, go up or down? Give you guys a couple of seconds. Look at it carefully. What do you think the stock's going to do, go up or down? Okay. Everybody ready? All right. 
So the stock right here went from 1620, hit a support level at 1608, went back to 1620, which probably was resistance levels, came back down to 1608, which is probably the support levels, went back up to 1620, probably hit this resistance levels. Now it's at 1608. Anybody want to change their answer? What do you think the stock's going to do, go up or go down? Okay, if you said it was going to go down, you're correct. Why? Because up here at 1620, there was a 10,000 share seller at 1620. Okay? Th remember, this is the past. This is the present. Back in the past, there could have been a 10,000 share buyer out there that was supporting it. Now there's no buyer. If there's no buyers out there, ladies and gentlemen, what happens to the price of the stock? Does it go up or go down? Goes down. Now, you know how much lower it could probably go? Mm, pretty far. Because first Boston's looking to buy here at 1571. There's no real significant buyer. Let me explain something to you. If this seller at 10,000 decides what we say called hit the bid, okay, and he starts selling it to all these buyers out there, if you know what? That stock's going to drop pretty damn fast. Um, no problem. No problem, John. Thank you very much for that. So that is where people make mistakes. Because people look at them like, but I thought it was support levels. I thought it was going to go, you know, I thought it was going to bounce. Well, listen, you need buyers out there. That's right. It's not rocket scientists. It's really not. All right, guys, so let me start moving along because I'm running a little behind. I'll try to answer some questions. Steve um, Bigelow kind of ate into my time a little bit, so let me kind of get this um, moving a little. So basically, you could – and now the next thing is this. You could see those high-frequency trades on time and sales. And how do you see it? By looking at the time and sales window. So a lot of us are looking at it and saying, well, how did you know the guy got executed? Use the time and sales window. By the way, do you guys know time and sales um, – the time in sales window is um, uh, the chart gets his data from time in sales. Well, Eric, um, you could ask, um, you could ask, I don't trade Forex, but you could ask when Tom, um, Todd, Todd Gordon comes on, he does a lot of Forex trading. He'll explain it to you or uh, Hubert Centers. Okay. This is what, what I am is I'm a day trader. I'm a stock day trader. And let me explain something to everyone. Um, everybody always thinks that stock day trading is very risky. It's very dangerous. It's not, listen, you got to be a good day trader to understand how to swing trade. It's the movement of the stock, what it does over the course of the day, that will do it over the course of the of the of the the the, the night, the week, everything. But you have to understand is that all us mentors and all us educators that are here, this is a part time job for us. We don't trade all day, okay? I mean, look, for example, this is, uh, this is Friday. This is Intel. Intel. Out of all stocks, Intel. I'm not even telling you what stocks I traded. Intel. Look what Intel did within the first 30 minutes of the open. Okay? Look at that. Look at that move of that, that, what it made. This is what we do. And look what it did over the course of the day. You could have just made your money this morning, you know, bought it at $32, sold it 30 minutes later at $32.60, made you 500 bucks. I don't know. $500 a day, what is that, 130000 a year? Did you have to be there all day? You didn't have to. This is why us traders love teaching and love trading. Because to us, it's a part-time job. You don't have to be there all day. Look at, the, look at this, at 9.44. 9.44 in the morning. Look at all these positions that I'm in, that I bought them. Look at the time, 9.25. Right now, it's 9.44. Up a thousand, twenty, two eighty, up a hundred and ninety, up eleven hundred, down one thirty, down down a hundred and ninety, up four hundred. If you do the math, I'm up about two two thousand dollars. Look at this movement of the stock. Went from six forty up to six eighty. I mean, how much more money do you need? You know, that's that's basically what it is. Um, I use uh, minute charts. Um, um, bid is an ask confusing. Bid are the buyers, the ask is the sellers. The people that are looking to buy it are on the bid, Jody. The people looking to sell it are on the ask. 
So you and, and the other thing, Jody, it's very important. You got to know how to play the game. You got to know how to place bids and offers out there. If you don't, you're going to get yourself in trouble. All right. Now the next thing is this. Let me tell you the next biggest failure rate of today's industry. Does anybody here journal their trades? Anyone here journal? Manage their trades, write it down every day. Well, here at Cyber Trading University, not only do we build a journal system, but um, we give our students these journals. This is actually uh, a student of ours, uh, Calvin R. You can meet him on Monday, uh, Monday morning. Um, he, did, he had, a, we had a, actually a really good day. Uh, he ended up making, what is it, uh, $3,200 for the day. You know, he did a couple of trades, and he did two trades, stocks called VRX and ENDP. Anyone ever heard of those stocks? Anybody heard of any of them? VRX and ENDP? Ah, oh, Jeremy, we're going to talk about that. You know, but I bet everyone heard of Apple, right? I bet everyone heard of Intel. Listen, there's another world out there, ladies and gentlemen. You could trade. There's a lot of stocks you could trade and do very, very well. Uh, but one thing we teach at Cybertrain University, we teach how to journal, manage your trades, what's going on. You got to turn, you got to turn, you got to manage your trades, okay? But let's talk about Fausto's best stock we traded of the week, okay? Because remember, everyone's going to have the opportunity to vote who had the best trade of the week. And let me tell you, this is my best trade of the week. By the way, any students here at Cybertrain University? Is there any students logged in? Any students of mine? Wayne, good, good. All right, so I want to just be able to everybody to concur that what I'm about to show you is what we traded um, here at Cybertrain University. Um, VRX on Tuesday was our biggest winning trade, okay? Uh, this is my Twitter feed, all right? We actually, um, we, what we do is we give a post to stocks um, that you could be in a trading room. If you're not in a trading room and, and, you're not, and let's say on the road, you still, we still record every one of our trades. Our biggest winner was the VRX, okay? Now remember, not everything moved. VRX, you could see, is worth watching. This is March 15th, okay? And by the way, if anybody here wants to follow us on Twitter or, or watch our thousands of videos on YouTube, you know, feel free to, you know, look us up and you can, you know, uh, paper trail everything we do. Because people always ask me, they're like, well, how do, uh, you know, how do we know you really did these trades? How do you backtrack or whatever? We post everything. Okay, we post everything. We don't trade everything, but we post everything. But look what happened to this VRX. This stock was down from $287 back in August, okay? And the stock went all the way down to 26, all right? Got destroyed, destroyed. And you know what? If you knew how to be a day trader, you would have learned how to swing trade this stock. Look what this stock did as of March 15th. Look at the date here on the bottom, okay? This stock went from $70, okay? Um, we traded it on the 15th, which I showed you right here. This is our morning trade. And then we just shorted the hell out of it. Shorted the hell out. Stock went from $60 to 11 o'clock, went all the way down to 40. You do the math. What is 60 minus 40? What is 60 minus 40? $60 minus $40. That's $20. Could you imagine shorting 1,000 shares of that stock and making $20,000 in about an hour and a half? Okay? Never seen anything like it. Well, well Gurm, you know what? You're going to see it starting Monday because this was only my best trade of the week. This wasn't our best trade of the, the year. We had better trades than this. I mean, we had, uh, we had KBIO. You know, you probably saw that. They were investigating them. And, and you know, listen, pharmaceutical stocks have been phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. So, anyway, this was our big trade of the week, and um, you could see how the stock. How do we know it was going to still keep going down? It was a short. Listen, time and sales on the right. People kept dumping it on the offer. You saw the big block orders keep coming up. Nobody was buying it. Everyone was kept dumping it and just keep selling and selling and selling. Now the next thing people ask is, how did you know it was going to go lower? Any of you guys ever trade pre market? Anybody here trade pre market? Biggest thing we trade, pre-market, we focus on pre-market, um, we show you what's happening in pre-market. Actually, we do our trading, um, we do our, when we do our trading room, we do it during the pre-market hours, okay? But you can see, look at, the, um, this is actually as of the 18th. We were still shorting it as of yesterday, 
Still shorting it in the picks, the afternoon picks. Look at that stock. Went from $30 down to $27, down another $3. I mean, how much more could you make? Not only would you would have known to do it as a great day trade, but you would have saw it as a great swing trade. Yeah, it went down to 40, and now it's at 26. People ask, well, why didn't you hold it? Yeah, you know what? If you saw what happened over the course of the day, you could have still done it as a swing trade. And not only that, but you could have did a great options trade on that. That's the way you have to look at it. You guys have to understand, the potential income, some of us don't need to make a lot of money, okay? But if you really do the math, if you made 50 cents on 1,000 shares, 20 trading days on the average, it's $120,000 a year. Social Security, I know, is not paying enough. A lot of us are not going back to, the wor going back to work. Some of us are too overqualified. Listen, this is the best job in the world for a reason. You know that. That's why you're here. You just need to know how to play the game, and you need to surround yourselves with great traders, and that's what we do here at the Cyber Expo. We're bringing the best mentors because we've all lost. We've done it. We've seen it. You got to understand, knowing how to play this game, you'll have more time to spend with your family you'll be, and friends. You know, th but for us, this is, you know, it, it's, it's a great challenge to convince everyone to go out there and do these things. You could, you know, there's so much you can do. Now, the reason why I teach is because I was already retired at the age of 24. I started when I was 22. What was a 22-year-old supposed to do after 24? I made so much money, so much money, ladies and gentlemen, that when it came to trading, people kept asking me, well, you know, 24, I mean, a 24-year-old having a beautiful apartment, um, driving a, a brand new 911 convertible, you know, having a membership at the golf club. People ask me, Where's your, who, who, you, who, you, who are you here with? Where's your dad? No, it's my membership. You think, you think Hillary Clinton got paid a quarter of a million dollars to do a speaking because Goldman Sachs really doesn't make that much money? Listen, it's a business. We know it. That's why we don't, we don't hate them. We just want to be them. That's why you're here. Now, to finish up, because I got Sandy coming in, and I want to give you guys some time to come and join me on Monday. I want you to come visit our cyber group trading floor. Um, come and visit the hundreds of traders that are day trading and see. And, and, and the most important thing I want you to see, this is all online. But the most important thing I want you to see is I want you to not judge us on the winners. I want you to judge us on the losers and how we control the losses and how we move on. You heard, you're going to hear from Sandy, and you also heard it from Steve Bigelow, and you'll hear from Hubert and Todd. We all say the same thing, okay? We all trade exactly the same. We just have a little bit of a different style, but you got it. You need to be mentored. We've all been mentored. We've all been trained. We've learned from people's mistakes. So come out there, ladies and gentlemen, and learn how to actually go out there, and I'll show you how to follow high-frequency trades. I'll show you exactly how to buy and sell. I'll show you exactly stocks that we've traded. And then you'll, you'll make a choice and realize if trading's for you. You see, the worst thing could happen, ladies and gentlemen, like what every other speaker is going to tell you today, the worst thing could happen is you make an investment, you take a little time out of your hands, and what's the worst thing could happen? You, you, you learn something? So this is what I'm offering everyone. $37, okay? For $37, I want you to come and join me for three days. Three days in my trading room. And I will also, I'm going to throw in a live workshop that's going to teach you how to tape read. So for some of you here, listen, there's hundreds of people here, and it's very hard for me to answer some questions, and I'm, 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 I'm falling behind uh, with, with, with the speakers. Um, but the thing is this, come exclusively, let me, I want some people that are serious. And the $37, honestly, some people are like, well, why are you charging $37? Well, first of all, two reasons. Number one, I want people that are serious that are going to be there. And number two, I want, I want, um, you know, I, I want to cover the webinar technology. And the thing is this, if you're not satisfied, I'll give you money back after the three days and the workshop. I don't really, I'm not keeping the lights on for $37. Okay. So basically the goal is this, if you're not happy, I'll give you money. back. Make a small investment, try it out. If you like it, we'll move on. I'll teach you everything. And you're going to get not, not, not one hour, but you're going to get literally over 50 hours of education for that $37. And then you make a choice if you want to move forward. The hours, they run from 8.30 in the morning to um, 4.30 in the afternoon Eastern time, Eric, 
the room is open all day. We do live all broadcasts, and also you're going to get a workshop. Um, I'm going to do a live workshop that I'm going to teach all of you who register for this event. Okay? Um, any last-minute questions, ladies and gentlemen, before, uh, before I pass it over to Sandy? I don't want to uh, tap into her time, and I also want to give you guys some time to go to that trial and be able to purchase it. Any, any last-minute questions? Awesome workshop a uh, week. Uh, can I join for two? Yes, you, you don't have to. You don't have to um, to activate your trial. Um, I have. I built a, a wonderful company at Cybertree University. We have over over 20 employees that work here. They all been educated. A lot of them are instructors. Um, you could act, you could t tell them when you want to activate it. You don't have to start on Monday. You could start it two weeks from now. Yes, Paul, and the, the workshop will be recorded. You will get that recording um, when you attend the event. Thank you very much, Rich. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Was me 12 time world champion. I traveled around the world. I've been to France, Paris, Italy, I mean, uh, China, all of the United States and Canada. I did the Traders Challenge. I beat every school in the industry. So, and the thing is this I'll show you how I did it when you attend. Well, thank you very much. All right, guys. So, listen, I'm going to give you guys just another couple of minutes. Um, I'm going to play the music. You're going to give you an opportunity to go out there and do your purchase. And then in the meantime, Sandy's going to call, Sandy Shank is going to come and join. I'm going to introduce her. And then, um, and then just like I said, everything's being recorded. Enjoy the presentations as we're going along. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. And uh, enjoy the rest of the, the Cyber Expo.